So in a previous video, I connected this trig function to this cubic function so that the point at which they met, the gradients would be the same, nice and smooth. Now I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna connect a trig function onto this cubic function, something like this, something that looks like that. Uh, and it's gonna have a smooth gradient there, but I'm gonna use a different method to the method I used last time. Okay, so let's figure some things out. First of all, if I wanna match up the gradients here, it would be good if I knew the gradient at that point. So the blue function here, g of x, is this monstrosity here. So the derivative of that is equal to this right here. I've cheated using GeoGebra, but it's straightforward. It's three times this x squared, two times 6.58 x, and then just negative 137, et cetera. So there is my derivative. Now, I wanna know the gradient at that point, so I just sub the number 24 into that derivative function. Okay, so I have a gradient here of negative 2.5, just by subbing 24 in for x and x. There, that's my gradient. And that looks, looks right there, negative 2.5. Okay, next step. I want to uh, add in this trig function. Now, trig functions are all of the same form. Basic form is y equals a sine b x plus c plus d. And this is where I'm going to diverge from my previous example, because instead of working with this graph with all four of the variables, I'm going to work with the graph with only two of the variables. I'm going to write it in the much simpler form of y equals a sine bx and ignoring the c and ignoring the d. Now, what is that going to do? Well, that's going to give me a sine function that starts right here. It's going to give me a sine function with some amplitude that I decide on and some period that I decide on, but it's very far away from where we want it. We're gonna shift it there later on, but we're gonna work over there. Okay, let's think, what kind of periodic function do I want? Well, you can see the periodic function that I've drawn, it's pretty bad, uh, but it looks like it has, um, it looks like it has, oops, let's try that again. It looks like it has an amplitude of about one, and it looks like it has a period of about one, two, three, four. A period of about four. So an amplitude of one, a period of four. If it has an amplitude of one, that means the A value is one. And if it has a period of four, uh, four equals two pi over B and B must equal pi over two, which means that the graph that I want is Y equals one times sine uh, pi over two. X. Okay, now let's go into some graphing software and see what y equals sine pi on 2x looks like. All right, so I'm in my graphing software now. This is the original function. There's the trig up there and there's the cubic there. And this is the equation I just created, y or k of x equals sine pi on 2x. You can see it has an amplitude of one and a period of four. Now, um, I, want a, I want a gradient of, looking back at our thing here, I eventually want to connect it using a gradient of negative 2.506 blah, 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 blah. So negative 2.5, okay. Let's keep negative 2.5 in our head. That means that the derivative of this equation is going to have to have a point on it somewhere that is negative 2.5. So let's just graph the derivative function of k of x. So I don't have to calculate this manually, I can ask GeoGebra to do it. So I can just say, what is k dash of x? And you can see it's graphed it for me. Um, now I'll just get rid of this for a second. I'm just gonna sort of zoom in on this a little bit. Okay, this purple function here is telling us the derivative, the gradient, at each part of the blue function. And you can see that the 
highest gradient that this reaches is about one point, uh, I don't know, one point something. Definitely not two. Uh, and you can see that the lowest gradient it reaches is negative one point something. Definitely not negative two. That's a big problem for us. It's a big problem for us because if we go back to where we started from, we want to connect it with a gradient of negative 2.5. This blue function, this blue function never has a gradient of negative 2.5. So that causes me a problem. How can I fix that problem? Well, I think there's probably two ways that I could fix that problem. Uh, I go back here and I say, wait, maybe I should make this green function go higher and lower with the same period. Instead of having an amplitude of one, maybe I should have an amplitude of two. Let's see what would happen if I had an amplitude of two. Uh, so that means that this blue function here wasn't that, but it was two times that. As you can see, I increase the amplitude here. And now let's look at our gradient function that we've created. Ah, okay. And you can see that my gradient function now goes above two. And it looks like it's probably getting up to three. And it's getting down to negative three. Which means that there is a point, many points on this periodic function where it does have a gradient of approximately negative 2.5. We can see that by graphing y equals negative 2.5. And you can see at all of those um, moments, here and here and here and here and here, the blue function has a gradient of negative 2.5. So that's one way that I could have done it. Um, there is another way that I could have done it, I think. I could have said, well, I want the amplitude to stay one. I don't want it to swerve up and down and up and down. But instead, I'll um, decrease that period. So instead of a period of four, I'll have a period of two. Um, and because if I had a period of two, it'd be swinging the same amount but faster, uh, which means that that gradient would be steeper. So changing the amplitude, changing the period, it is going to change my maximum gradient for my trig function one way or the other. So I'm going to stick with altering the amplitude here. I'm going to make it have an amplitude of two, which means that my green function is going to be y equals two sine pi on two x, which of course means that my drawing is incorrect. I want a period of four, which means it's going to repeat by the time it gets to there, and repeat again by the time it gets to there. And I'm going to have it swinging two, negative two. So it's going to go down to here, here, here down, up, down. And then I'll repeat that one more time, down, up, down. Okay, so that's it. Calling it Y, let's call it H of X, because then we've got F of X, we've got G of X, and the green one's gonna be H of X. So now that I know that H of X is equal to two sine pi on two X, I know that H dash of X is equal to pi cos pi on 2x. And so we want that to have a gradient of this right here. So we sub that into this value. So negative 2.50690782888 equals pi cos pi on 2x. Now, of course, the problem is that there are an infinite number of solutions to that. Uh, if we go back into here, and instead of having y equals 2.5, I sub in that exact value. In that exact value, you can see I have this black line here that's passing through the derivative function at an infinite number of places. Okay, what do I want? Uh, it looks like I want, let's just choose the first one. So let's go intersections and we'll intersect at, this is the first time it happens. So we'll intersect this with this and we'll see what happens. We've got our H value there. Okay, and we can see that the value is that right there. Now the 1.58 is the X coordinate. The negative 2.506 is the gradient at that 
point. So that's the number that I want. X equals 1.5881891513. That is one of the many X coordinates where uh, the H of X function will have a gradient of that. Now, of course, this point here, when it's happening, um, I need to know that point. So I need to sub 1.588 back into h of x. Okay, so when I sub 1.588 etc into h of x, my answer is 1.205 etc. Um, okay, it's easy to get lost here, so let's draw the picture of what we've got. We have a function h of x equals 2 sine pi on 2x. That function passes through 0, 0, it goes up to 2 and down to negative 2, and it has a period of 4. Okay, so it goes up, down, there. Okay, just do the 1 for now. That's a terrible drawing, but you get the idea. Um, we say that it has a gradient of negative 2.5 at x equals 1.58. So the gradient of negative 2.5 is happening at 1.588, right about there. And the y coordinate at that point is 1.205, etc. 1.205, etc. All right, so we have a great point right there that has the same gradient as that point right there. And so if we could just take this function, this function right here, and shift it to there, we would be in business. And so shifting it from there to there is really, really straightforward because we're trying to shift that dot to there. So we want to shift it by an amount of 24 minus 1.588. And we want to shift it up by an amount of 2 minus 1.205. Shift left is 24 minus 1.58, which is 22.41. And the shift up is 2 minus 1.2, which is 0.79. So we want to shift up by 0.79, and we want to shift left by 22.41. And that can be easily achieved using a C value and a D value in our trig function. So our original function, the one that we started with, was 2 sine pi on 2x. And we want to shift it left by this amount and shift it up by this amount. So here's one I created earlier. Let's just call it m of x. Come up here, mate. Okay, and let's take a look at what I've done. So what I've done here is subtract 22.411, because remember, if you're trying to shift something left, you subtract. And I've added on the end my D value 0 0.7946. Okay, let's graph that now and see what it looks like. So here is our initial uh, function right here. Don't worry about these weird lines here. That's just some other stuff that I was working on. All right, so let's just look at the function we had so far. And then we had 2 sine pi on 2x. And then we took that and we shifted it. And this is my shifted function here. Shift it. All right, let's see how that looks now. All right, I think we're in business because if we grab this and move it over to here and we sort of zoom in right on that point, we can see very, very smooth transition from this point here to uh, this point here. So I have successfully connected a trig function to this cubic, which is what we're aiming for. So what did I, what did I do? There was a bit of thinking here, right? I had a cubic. I knew I wanted to connect a trigonometric function to it. So I found out what the gradient was that I was targeting. And then I checked, first of all, that the trigonometric function I was thinking of had the, a gradient that was that big. It turned out it wasn't. 
So I had to change my trig function so that it did have a gradient inside of it somewhere that was that large. And then I graphed it without shifting it, just graphed it. And then I found a single point on the graph that had that gradient. And then I shifted the graph over and connected it up. Uh, this version of doing things is actually the version that I am drawn towards rather than the one that I made in my previous video, but different uh, techniques for different functions. Have fun.